Today I'm climbing Mount Elbert, the tallest peak in Colorado and the second tallest peak in the lower 48. And you're watching Andy Parrish Outdoors. Well, hey everybody, Andy here. Thanks for joining me today. And today we're at Melt Mount Elbert here in uh, Colorado. Uh, we're at the parking lot. Um, we can't actually get up to the trailhead because um, the road's closed. So we're all uh, parking down here kind of in this lower section. We've got to hike an extra mile up to just get to the start of the trailhead. I'm here with my buddy Brent and we're gonna be uh, hiking our first uh, 14er today if all goes well. So I'll check back more later. All right, so right now it's it's about 7.50 in the morning. Uh, we left the parking lot at about 7.40, just about 10 minutes ago, uh, making our way up the road to uh, the actual trailhead. So this was not on our, not on our map uh, planned route. I was supposed to drive this, but uh, not too bad. You know, warm the legs up, I guess, before we, uh, we start the actual trail. Brent, how are you feeling this morning? Good. Ready to climb your your first 14er? I am. I've been looking forward to this for a while. This one's redemption, so. Unfinished business. Big time. We're gonna get it done today. Amen to that. We had this uh, on the schedule for last year when we came out and did the Maroon Bells four pass loop. We did that in, uh, what was that four days yeah. and our fifth day was supposed to be a drive through independence pass on the way back and then hit mount albert here just outside of leadville colorado and uh hit our first 14er but maroon bells was uh, a big enough challenge i think for us last year that we got off trail and we're a little sore a little gimpy and we looked at each other and said do you want to get up at 4 a.m. tomorrow and go hike a 14er? Nope. How about you? Nope. So we decided to hang out in Leadville and hit a couple restaurants and, you know, uh, watering holes and uh, stop at Melanzana and pick up a couple uh, micro grid fleece hoodies, which uh, we're not going to have time for on this trip. But uh, we had a great time uh, just seeing the town. You know, we had never been out there before, so do a little sightseeing, and that was perfect. But we knew when we um, switched to this plan um, just, gosh, six weeks ago, something like that, that, okay. all right, we, we got to throw a 14er on. We thought, do we want to do Holy Cross, uh, Mount of the Holy Cross, which we'll be hiking around um, starting tomorrow. Keep an eye out for that video. But uh, we decided instead, let's come back and, and hit Elbert. Um, it's not a, um, you know, super difficult 14er, um, but it's also the highest one. So, hey, perfect one to start with. So we're going to see how we do and uh, uh, crank this puppy out. So we're hoping to be up there sometime around midday, but we have no clue. Uh, neither one of us have done this type of hike before, you know, just the monster climb, but we got plenty of time. The weather is absolutely stunningly gorgeous. Hardly a cloud in the sky, but uh, you never know in the afternoons around here. So well, we're gonna hike a little longer. Uh, I'll check back in as we get up to the trailhead. Redemption, baby. Redemption. Looks like Mount Massive Trailhead's another half mile up. But we're headed right here to the Mount Elbert Trailhead, San Isabel National Forest. This is the normal uh, parking lot. You can see the start of the trailhead over here and the signage up. There's a nice little outhouse. Um, 
these are all through this uh, campground area back by where we parked too but you've got spots normally you'd be able to come up here and park uh, but because of work that's being done at least according to the signs it's all uh it's closed down and being here now september um i don't know if it's they close these up for after a certain time of year to winterize kind of thing but all of these have been locked so i'm going to test this too but um none of the none of the outhouses have been open yeah these say out of order um it does say Emerald Lake restrooms are open right now. Uh, we passed that on the way up here. You ready to go? Ready to do it. Actual, actually start the trail? Yeah. All right. right there. Not just the approach trail. With a little bit of up down. Yeah. All right. Let's get this thing going. Junction to the Colorado Trail, quarter of a mile. It's also overlaps with Continental Divide Trail. And then junction to the North Mount Elbert Trail, one mile. That is where we're headed. All right, we've met up at the junction. Here's the uh, Colorado Trail heading northbound that way, southbound. Also following the Mount Elbert Summit Trail. Lot of switchbacks. Here's where the uh, CDT breaks off. CDT heads down there. You can see actually on the tree. It's got the little uh, logo for uh, both the CDT and the Colorado Trail. So that'll head off down here below and uh, kind of goes around Albert. And uh, if you wanted to do, you can do a loop um, where you can climb Albert to the top and then there's a second trail that comes down and will connect uh, down on this side of the mountain with the CDT and Colorado Trail and then you can hike this loop back up. I think the up and back um, is supposed to be something like, you know, eight or nine miles, something like that. And if you do the full loop, it's something like 12 or 13 um, and you get a longer section on the CDT Colorado Trail. We considered that, but I think as of today, we're just going to do just the up and back, see how we feel. So, but this has been pretty nice so far. Well, hello there. I remember that type of bird from uh, Snowmass Lake. You remember that? Yeah, the mooch birds. Yeah, this is a mooch bird, as we call them. They're kind of fearless. They get up close and they're looking for handouts. Well, hello. How are you? 
you're way too comfortable with people. Yeah. Wow. If it goes for your eyes, run. There's a movie about that. We just passed the three mile mark from our cars. It's 9.30 and we're at 10,884 feet. So far it hasn't been a terrible three miles. Actually pretty gradual. Some sections like this that get you a little out of breath. And then we've been pleasantly surprised that we'll get a few sections that have been a little flat to kind of catch your breath before the next climb, at least so far. So I will check back with more later. All right, we uh, stopped to take a little break. We're about three and a half miles in from the car. Um, two hours and 22 minutes on the climb. So we're uh, just trying to be steady. Um, it's, the climb has gotten quite a bit steeper here the last half mile. So we enjoyed that little flat section there. Um, there in the middle, uh, the first mile was some switchbacks and then it was a section of flat. And then this is straight up, um, no switchbacks. Pretty decent climb. We're, uh, let me take a look here. Uh, 11,384 feet is our current elevation. We're up just about 1,500 feet um, in vertical climb so far. So we've got a ways to go um, to get there. 14.4 and we're at 11, 11 four, <laughs> roughly. So we're trying to stop every um, hour to um, get a drink, um, get a little snack, something. Um, and then occasionally when the climbs are pretty tough like this, little sections, we'll stop like this and just get a little water, um, get some electrolytes or whatever. I'm gonna do that here next. Uh, drink a little so and then uh, we should be coming up on the section above tree line pretty quick um, it's not too much further up here from what Brent says so looking forward to it here he comes I'm gonna turn this off and get back to a little bit of hiking <laughs> Stop, take a little break. Trees are starting to thin out. Pretty awesome view. And up that way. Although it still seems like the distance to the peak is off. Yeah. I don't know why. We'll have to see when we get up there, but I'm thinking it might even be more than 11. 
Yeah. Just the way that it's going. It's like the climb thing that it tells me says that I've still got like 1.9 miles to go to the, to the summit. Again, exactly how accurate is the map? Is the summit an exact point? Is it a ridge? Is it a ridge? And you know, I don't know. I mean, this looks like some absolutely massive. You can see Leadville off in the distance. Spectacular day. We're getting there, little by little. Got this. Just ever expanding, spectacular view. You can see a couple lakes down back behind me. Just awesome. Brent's coming up over here. We've got that big climb, um, and then a little bit more, a little bit more after that. That's, I believe, the first false uh, peak that we'll get to. But uh, it should be pretty close. We should be close to 14,000 by the time we hit the top of that, and then have a little bit more to get all the way to the top. But holy cow, is that just spectacular. You got Mount Massive back over behind Brent. You got Leadville way down in the distance. Just awesome. Amazing views everywhere. I don't know if you can see. You probably can't on this camera with enough zoom. But there's another trail that goes up that ridge up to the top. So if you wanted to do the loop, I believe going down takes it back down this way towards the CDT. There are a couple people up here, the top of the ridge, just heading that way. I can barely make them out into the top. Super cool. <sighs> All right, I think I've caught my breath. <laughs> I'm gonna shut this off and keep going. That's all right, guys. You're fine. This section is kicking my butt. It's not a lot of great trail and a little bit of scrambling at times. You're not really sure where to go. You know, looks like some people are going up this way. Some people are going up that way. It's just not clear at all. All right, made it to the first big kind of like full summit. Spectacular views all around. got that to go and uh, look for the Cairns at the top and we'll see if we can find a geological marker up there as well but we're at uh, 13,800 feet so only 600 vertical to go all right let's do this all right I'm almost to the top of that second fall summit that you could really see from a distance he always felt like that was the top and then you got a little climb here. I'm gonna go up and over that and uh, see what's on the other side. So getting closer. Definitely hard to breathe over 14,000 feet. Here's that pile of rocks that you could see is that full first full summit. And then the second, well, actually this is the second. That's the third. And then once you get up here, you see there's a little bit of a ridge line up to there. So we'll walk up there and see what we got. 
but we're close because we're at 14,263 feet at this point. Pretty spectacular. All right, we're just enjoying a couple cold brews here up at the summit. Um, enjoying our first 14er. Uh, haven't had any altitude issues, which uh, is great. You know, I actually had a little bit of a headache coming in yesterday on the flight. Most of it was just turbulence. So um, once we uh, got to the hotel and got hydrated, you know, that kind of did the trick. So got up this morning took a couple of leave and have just been pounding waters and Gatorades and really didn't have a problem. Um, so very blessed. The weather is spectacular up here. Um, you know, to be at, at 14,400, whatever, um, and there's a light breeze, you know, that's about it. You know, every time it seems like I go up on elevation, it's just windy as, you know, as all get out. So. Um, it's not too bad here. Uh, it, it's definitely chilly. You know, you, you notice that a little bit. So it's nice to have a jacket to throw on. A couple people have talked about being really cold um, and not having extra layers to, to throw on if they're going to hang out at the summit. But this, this is pretty awesome. I'm trying the uh, Colorado Ski Patrol, the uh, Abbey Dog Pale Ale. Not bad. Not bad at all. So, uh, Brent's behind me here. Sorry to make you dizzy, but uh, he's back over here enjoying his beer as well. And uh, sun's coming out a little bit. We're gonna drink these down and then uh, hydrate a little bit. Probably have a little bit of a snack. And uh, I don't know. Figure out when we want to head back down. Uh, all we've got left is. Um, we're going to go down the exact same way we came up and then head back to Leadville for the night. So stop and do uh, some pizza and some brews and then uh, look to head out to Holy Cross Wilderness um, for our four-day 
uh, three night adventure over there. So that should be pretty awesome too. Again, keep an eye out for that video. But this has been a great uh, 14er to do uh, first. Um, only a small little section was, was pretty brutal with a little bit of a scree field. Other than that, it, it was pretty, um, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's easy, but it wasn't super technical. You know, uh, some decent um, switchbacks, some some decent sections that were pretty much straight up, but um, you know, it could have been a lot worse. And some of these other 14ers are a lot worse. So uh, for the highest point, uh, class one, not too bad. So that's all for now. We'll uh, check back in later. Time to head down. Brent, first 14er in the books. Tell me uh, the honest truth. The good, the bad, the ugly. What do you think of Mount Elbert as your first one, not knowing anything about the others? Started great. The last mile and a half, two miles, I was moving slower than the tortoise and the horse with the hair. Uh, baby steps, lots of breaks, lots of stops. But uh, that summit was totally worth it. Once you get up to the top of this thing, there's just no feeling like it. So, I don't know, I think I must have said this doesn't suck about 12 times. Up there, well, but... you're right, this does not suck. It was awesome. Uh, not technical, very doable for anyone who's in yep. enough shape to hike at elevation. Yep. So. Uh, I think it was an awesome choice for a first 14er. Yeah. And it's the tallest one in Colorado. So. Yep. We're going to do Mount Massive tomorrow. No, we're not. I'm just kidding. Nope. We're not doing that. Nope. Holy cross tomorrow. Yep. Something totally different. And now for something completely different. <laughs> this is pretty cool, though. I've done a couple summits of, you know, peaks, but... Not, no 14 fourteeners, and this was this was pretty neat. Just to to say you've done it, to get up here and see the views, and I mean it's it's just epic. And to think, you know, this is the second highest point in the lower 48, um, the highest point in Colorado, just pretty epic. So how how do you not love love this view? It's just unbelievable, and we're so blessed to have weather hold up all day long because you know doing these it's not uncommon that you'll get afternoon storms and things like that and we had none of that so we could just hang out at the summit for the longest of times and now the question is going to be are we going to be able to make it back to the car before dark <laughs> so we started you know jumping in the car right around uh first light sun hadn't even come up we had about an hour and a half drive to get here so you know, didn't hit the trailhead until, I don't know, 740? 745. 745. And made it up to the top. I, I'll have to look and see what what time it was when we hit it, hit the top. But we hung out up there for a long time. But it was pretty, pretty epic. Um, if you have a chance to do Mount Elbert, I would highly recommend it. I think it's got a lot of uh, challenge, but... It's one of the easier 14ers and uh, it's the highest. And, and there's some spectacular views um, all the way around, so. Remember, it doesn't suck. It does not suck. All right, we're gonna make our way back down to the cars. Um, maybe I'll do a final check at the end and maybe show you a little bit of scenery, some of the views, kind of a compilation of stuff as I go down, because you had to stop and turn around just to see this when you're on your way up. So it's going to be a whole different set of stuff just on your way down. So thanks for joining along on this video. If you've enjoyed it, give the video a thumbs up. Let's me know that you like this kind of content and that, you know, I should continue to put out content like this. Um, really appreciate that. So 